Hey everyone, I'm Richard and today I'm here to answer a really simple question. What the hell is a teraflop anyway? Well, put simply, it's a metric of computational performance, but it's also a key part of the battleground for console fanboys. When the Xbox One and PlayStation 4 specs first leaked, it showed a big, big gulf in GPU power between the two, an extra 50% of graphical power. Okay, so let's break this down. First of all, how are teraflops actually calculated? Well, with AMD graphics hardware, as you'll find in the consoles, it's actually really simple. The first part of the sum goes like this. You take the amount of individual shader cores in the GPU and you multiply that by their clock speed. Okay, so on the PlayStation 4, that's 1152 shaders running at 800 megahertz. And for Xbox One's final spec, that's 768 shaders at 853 megahertz. So after that, you multiply the result by two. And this is because the GPUs can actually carry out two instructions per clock simultaneously. Now the sum here gives you the megaflops output of each console GPU. Divide that by 1 million and you're done. So 1.84 teraflops confirmed for PS4 and 1.31 for Xbox One after its spec boost. Now let's look at the leaked spec for the PlayStation 4K Neo. 2304 shaders at 911 megahertz. Once again we multiply by 2 to get our megaflops and then once more divide by 1 million to get our final teraflop figure. So that's 4.2 then, a 2.3x boost over PS4's GPU power and a 3.2x increase over Xbox One. Okay, good stuff so far then. Now, what about Microsoft's Project Scorpio, the seemingly all-powerful Xbox One successor? And this is quite interesting actually because we don't know how many shaders it has, nor do we know its clock speed, but we do know the final 6 teraflop output. And while PS4K Neo is based on AMD's Polaris 10 chip, we also know via leaks the makeup of AMD's next gen processor, Vega. Now the full chip there has a whopping great 4096 shaders, and there's a very good chance that this will be Scorpio's GPU. But some of those shaders, well, they may well have to be deactivated in order to get more workable chips from the production line. So we have a couple of scenarios here in how Microsoft gets a 6 teraflop GPU. 3,584 shaders at 840 megahertz would take us there. Or alternatively, 3,840 at 800. That's 56 or 60 compute units where each has 64 shaders. So more shaders then, but lower clocks compared to Neo. And that's generally what tends to happen when you have a larger chip. So the next question is this, to what extent do teraflops actually define system performance? And this is a tricky one. So let's take a look at this benchmark. Okay, so the Radeon R9 Fury X on PC has 8.6 teraflops of compute. The GTX 1080 has nine, and yet the Nvidia card isn't just a bit better here, it's a lot better. The bottom line is that teraflop comparisons are only really useful when comparing two cards from the same GPU family. And even then, there are other aspects to consider too. Drivers, memory bandwidth, on-chip memory caches, the list goes on. Now, the comparisons between PS4 and Xbox One, well, they were kind of valid, and that's because they were indeed based on the exact same technology. But Neo and Scorpio come from a more efficient revision of AMD hardware, so teraflop comparisons between PS4 and Neo, well, until we know more, we're not entirely sure how valid they are. And then there's the fact that PlayStation 4's 40% increase in GPU power doesn't necessarily translate into 40% of extra performance. IO Interactive's Hitman is the best thing we have as a benchmark of console performance. We have an unlocked frame rate, identical visuals, and the same 1080p resolution. And in areas where we're limited by the GPU, yeah, we're looking at around a 30% increase in performance, not 40. And gaming performance can be limited by other factors in the system too, memory bandwidth being one, but CPU being another. Now, by and large, the PlayStation 4 is a more powerful console than Xbox One. We've seen it in our frame rate tests time and time again. And yet here's Hitman again, running faster on the Microsoft console. And we suspect that this is because of all those NPCs in this scene. They're really hitting the CPU hard and the Xbox one has 9.4% of extra CPU power. It doesn't happen often, but it can make a difference. And the classic case in point is Assassin's Creed Unity. Performance looks pretty similar between the two consoles until we hit an area again with lots of NPCs, simulating their AI, calculating their animation, 
that's a big ask for the CPU. The end result? The Xbox One has the faster CPU, so yeah, it runs the game faster. Okay, so what's the big takeaway here? Teraflops can be indicative of the kind of performance you're gonna get from a GPU, but it's only one aspect of the makeup of the hardware, and comparisons between different families or different manufacturers really don't hold much water according to their teraflop rating. But PS4, Xbox One, well, they did indeed come from the same family, and it will probably be the same case with Neo and Scorpio 2. How that translates into the next-gen gaming experience well, that remains to be seen. But right now, that's all I've got for you. I hope you found this video useful. Please remember to like and subscribe in order to support our work, and I'll see you soon.